Hey folks, welcome back to the Cotswold Collectibles YouTube channel. I'm Greg Brown, president and owner of Cotswold Collectibles. Uh, you probably noticed we haven't put out a video in quite a long time. Uh, that was because we were getting ready for the Christmas season. And as many of you know, that is our busiest time of the year. And then we had one of our employees go on maternity leave. And so we're running a person short. So we all kind of culminated our powers together and just kept the business running and such like that. But we always had a plan to bring the videos back. And today's the day. As you've already noticed, uh, we have a new background. Uh, this is kind of a sampling of some of the stuff that we're going to be coming out with this year. Um, some of these are, um, we, we just bought from a collection. So this background is going to be changing all the time. Um, but what we wanted to do today uh, to kick off our video series for 2022 is we wanted to talk about our, our Elite Brigade box series or our deluxe box series as we call them. We've done a few in the past, uh, but we kind of spread them out. But this year for 2022, we decided to kick it off and do three new sets. Um, I wanted to talk about today's first set, which is called Howl of the Yeti. Um, and talk about what all comes with it, how do you put it together and such like that, and kind of give you a little bit of a backstory of what went on to get this created. As you can see from the set, um, we went with the classic 1969 style Adventures of G.I. Joe design because we felt that this would be kind of what the set would have looked like. There were a lot of Arctic sets that were coming out in the 1960s from Hasbro underneath their G.I. Joe line. And so this is what we did. Um, it's, so we call it the Adventures of the Polar Explorer, an homage to the uh, G.I. Joe Adventurer. This is a project that started out um, a couple of years ago when I bought the company. I started working with um, custom maker Wes McHugh, uh, and you might know him through Classic Plastic on Facebook and other uh, places. Uh, Wes does a lot of custom work for us. Um, and we started the conversation with him. How could we manufacture, how could we make a Yeti? We went to him and he, we started brainstorming and, and basically Wes said, well, I can do the head sculpt, I can do the hands, I can do the feet. Can you find somebody who can do the body? Well, we looked at different bodies. We ended up settling for our Elite Brigade body. And what we did is we had one of the ladies who sews for us actually did the bodysuit for it. And this is what you see here. It looks like a big bunch of white fur, but what this actually is, this is a bodysuit. Uh, it's very, um, it fits the G.I. Joe Elite figure, which we also include with this set. Um, we basically include the figure without any hands and without any feet and without a head, and we'll show you why here in a minute. But basically, the, the, the suit closes up in the back. You can't see any seams or whatsoever. So when you put this on your figure, it makes your figure look bigger. Also, because of the size of the feet, the feet make it look taller. So it, when you stand it next to an Elite Brigade figure or a G.I. Joe figure or a 12-inch figure for that matter, it's going to be a little bit taller. But what I wanted to explain in the detail, and we really couldn't detail this um, when we put it online, is there are only 20 sets of these being made, and every set, that the, every Yeti set is different from the next one. Wes created 20 unique Yeti um, pieces to go to these sets. So this one, in, this one is number 12. And so when you'll take a look at it, you'll see that the feet have a blue and red motif, and same with the hands. And the hands really aren't hands, they're, they're actually gloved hands. And so we'll, we, what we'll do is we'll have hands and they'll fit in there and such like that. And then there's the head. Now, a little bit of a backstory on how these heads came to be. When we first started this, they actually had, the, the Yeti heads actually had eyes. It went through many different evolutions with Wes, and then one day he accidentally covered up the eyes and he sent it to me and he's like, what do you think about this without the eyes? And I thought it was actually a really cool idea because most sets that you see basically look like a Yeti um, or they look like a Sasquatch, you know, something like that, that had the eyes, the nose, the teeth and such like that. But we thought we want the backstory that basically if a Yeti's in the Himalayas and the wind is blowing and everything like that, he's not going to be able to see very good, but he could probably hear really good. So through evolution, he would lose his sense of his sense of eyesight and rely more on the hearing. Some people ask him, how do you put these together? And the way that these are built, there, there's like a little there's like a little socket in here. And the way that this is designed, it's, it's not to supposedly it's not so much to lock in as it is just to kind of fit on the head like this. And it's basically it will be pressure held pressure held in there. You can still take it off if you want to or such like that. But what we recommend to people is that they first put the bodysuit onto the figure, then 
put the feet on next, and then you can fluff the fur around the feet so you don't see the feet as much. And you'll notice on the feet, they're actually, those are actually our foot pegs. And what Wes did is he took the foot pegs and cast them into the feet. So you'll have this and you have the other foot here. And so, and unfortunately this model doesn't have the hands, but what you'll do is when you have the hands in there, um, basically you'll fit these on just like a glove over the hands. And then you take the fur and adjust it there. And then finally, what you do is you put the headpiece on top and just kind of push it just slightly and it'll, and it'll, just, it'll just fit real snug onto the, onto the, um, to the neck post like that. So that's basically a rough cut. And then all you have to do is you just kind of take it and you fluff it a little bit. And next thing you know, you, you have your Yeti. Some people are asking, why is, this pro why is this set priced higher? Well, it's a two-figure set. Um, and there's a lot of work that went into the Yeti pieces. And like I said before, Every Yeti is different from the next because every Yeti is hand created, hand painted, hand crafted by Wes McHugh. And unfortunately, quality comes at a cost. So here is our elite figure that doesn't have his clothes. We'll show his clothes here in a minute. But once you put the Yeti figure next to him, you'll see how much taller he is in, in contrast in comparison to the, to the G.I. Joe figure. So he, he definitely dwarfs them. The figure itself, um, every set will include and a Elite Brigade with a J-CAD, a painted hair J-CAD. If you want, however, if you want to place your order, um, you can talk to uh, talk to Vanessa or Abby, and you can you can tell them if you want to that you want to have an Ed, African American head sculpt with with the African American Elite body with classic hands. Uh, we can accommodate you on that. Otherwise, we're going to default to just doing the Jake body's painted head because again. We're basing this on the 1969 Adventures of G.I. Joe, which this would be appropriate for the time period. Every Polar Explorer is a, gets this as his gear. And some of these items are Cotswold items, some of these items are vintage items, and some of these items are custom made. Um, the gloves are actually vintage Action Man. We have a plethora of these in stock, so we included these in there. Um, also with the set are uh, two pair of brown short brown boots, reproduction style. Um, then we have our Elite Brigade goggles. We have our fur line, that's not our fur line jacket, but it's a fur, jack, a fur hooded jacket. Um, it has kind of like an imitation fur, but what's really nice, and you really don't notice this on the website, on the web record, is the people that sew for us, they actually put lining on the inside of the jackets, which is a nice added feature that you're not gonna notice, but it just goes to show the quality of work that goes into these sets. And the same thing goes for the pants. The pants are actually lined as well. So they're not just regular, you know, thin, you know, Arctic pants like you'll see with the white sets. These are these are real thick. So, I mean, it's like this guy's really in the Himalayas. Um, some people may think, well, that's overkill. But it's, again, it's attention to detail and the quality that we put into everything that we try to put out. So, because our figure is in the Himalayas, what we did is we took the high altitude oxygen set from, um, from Action Man from the 40th anniversary line. And uh, a lot of people didn't really understand what this was. It was basically a frame pack that had some oxygen tanks that had a hose and that had a regulator and then, a, and then an oxygen mask that hooked onto the figures. Now, because this set had um, didn't have elastic straps, it had rubber straps and they were very thin. And because we had a, a real thick parka, we actually added our own elastic straps on there that you can adjust to fit onto the parka. So you, you take that, you put your figure in there, um, get them all set up, and then you put that oxygen mask, put his goggles on, and he's, and he's ready for adventure. We didn't add any weapon or anything because basically the, the thought process we're going with this is that the he's an explorer. You know, it's the Adventures of 1969. He's just going up there and he's trying to cl climb Mount Everest or whatever up in the Himalayas, and he runs into the Yeti. Um, all the new sets that we have coming out, we have a new little, a little, new little cards that go into them. Um, this particular set, it kind of gives it a little bit of a backstory in the remote region of Asia's Himalayan mountain range, the Elite Brigade Polar Explorers mapping unknown territories. And then it goes into detail about what the set is. We wanted to do a mini comic, but the mini comics were gonna be very expensive. So we felt that this would be a really good substitute for that. Gives you the backstory, creates the adventure feel for it. Um, so start expecting to see this. Um, we have two other sets that are also gonna have these type of placards or cards in them to kind of tell the story. Again, we created, uh, we created 20 sets. Uh, we've already sold probably around five or six of them already. Um, 
Again, the price point on these, they're about $199.99. Uh, it's a little high for many, but for considering the fact, again, the quality of workmanship, the, the fact that every Yeti is custom made, no D2 Yetis are the same. They're made by Wes McHugh, who is an accomplished sculptor, painter, designer. Um, you know, you, you, you pay for that quality. And because we're not we're not making these things in China, some of these things were made in mass, but a lot of these things are made domestically here in the United States. Um, the, the outfits were made here in the U.S. West McHugh lives up in Pennsylvania. Uh, we felt that we had to charge accordingly for that. And we're only making 20 sets. So once they're done, they're done and they're gone. Anyway, um, this is the first of three sets we're going to be doing. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about the Darkon set. Uh, we have an affinity for and a big, uh, big respect and love for Super Joe. And we had been working on a dark on set many years ago and it just kept evolving and growing and growing. So next week, we'll talk about our dark on set. And then after that, we'll start talking about some other sets that are coming out. But um, that's it for this week's uh, video. Um, please uh, you know, hit us in the comments below. Make sure you like us, um, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week.